Good morning. So we'll start with our case today. So the case here, let's move on here. So this is a 25 year old man with a previous history of meningoencephalitis who now presents with spacing out episodes in the clinic. Patient was referred for an EG to identify if there were any epileptiform discharges. So let's get started from this first page. Take a piece of paper, take a pen and start writing your report. Just as a brief introduction, channels that end with an odd number are recording from the left side of the brain. Channel that end with an even number are recording from the right side of the brain. And channels that end with the letter Z are recording from the midline. The red channel is recording ECG or EKG. And this is the last channel is showing the pulse rate from the pulse oximetry. So do you see any asymmetry between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere and even before that do you see any alpha rhythm so let's look at p3 o1 first how many waves can you count here one two three four five six seven ish eight ish probably but this does not continue in the rest of the channel p3 o1 you're seeing a lot of theta frequencies and delta frequencies that is mixed there so if you go back to p4 o2 Similarly, you see some alpha-ish theta to alpha frequency here, and then you see some slower frequencies in the rest of the channel here. Compare the left hemisphere with the right hemisphere, and you do see an asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. So if you look at the left temporal channels here, so starting from FP1, F7, all the way to T501, and compare it with channels that end with the even number here, these are the right temporal channels, you do see an asymmetry. The right hemisphere here shows more slowing as compared to the left side. So how would you describe this page here? The EEG background does not demonstrate a well-defined, well-modulated posterior alpha rhythm. You do see, we do see an asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. There is relatively more delta and theta frequency. So let me point it out to you. So if you look carefully, these are the slow waves that you're seeing. There are fast waves that lie on top of the slow wave, but looking over here, you're seeing this delta activity. There is some, some theta activity right here, and then you're seeing more of the delta activity. If you look carefully, this is the delta activity. So many times, and most of the times, you will see a mixture of frequencies. So the delta frequency underlies or the fast frequencies overlie the slow frequencies and you're seeing a mixture of frequencies so carefully look at these channels here and compare it with the first four channels from the left side and you will be able to appreciate the asymmetry between the two sides okay let's move on to the next channel what do you see here so there are a few things that are quite obvious you see the muscle artifact so muscle artifact is quite obvious here. This is the muscle artifact. You're seeing muscle artifact here. You're seeing muscle artifact. In fact, you're seeing some muscle artifact here and here. So you see a lot of muscle artifact. What else do you see? You see a lot of eye blink artifacts. So this is the eye blink artifact here. This is the eye blink artifact here. And you see other eye blink artifacts. You see it here. You see it over here. Eye blink artifacts usually have the maximal amplitude at FP1 and FP2 since those two contacts are closest to the eyeballs. When the eye blinks and the cornea moves upwards, those are the channels that get most influenced. Now, something I want you to carefully look at the last two seconds of this page and see if you're able to identify any asymmetry between the left and the right side. So first compare the left parasagittal with the right parasagittal and then compare the left temporal and the right temporal. Do you see anything in specific? So I want to get your attention to this, these channels here. Look carefully over here. Do you see anything? So keep your eye on the left temporal. So this is the beginning of a different type of an abnormality as you will see in the next page but i want you to keep a close eye there uh, always make certain that you're keeping an eye on the ecg channel 
make sure that you do count the heart rate because that is something that if there is an irregularity or if there is an asystole, you don't want to miss that. Let's move on to the next page here. And what do you see? So those channels, the left temporal, now you see a rhythmic activity. Where is the rhythmic activity? You see the rhythmic activity right here. And let me highlight it for you as well. So you see the rhythmic activity here. You see a clear, the beginning was at the last page. So let me just quickly show you. So this is the beginning where I place those arrows. That is the beginning of the seizure. And this is the evolution of the seizure. So you see a rhythmic activity that is predominantly affecting the left, the left hemisphere, the left temporal head region. You see a frequency. This is one, two, three, four, five, six to seven hertz. And you see four channels that are involved here, but keep a careful eye and see if this is something that evolves. So by definition, an electrographic seizure has a clear beginning, which we've seen, a clear end, which we will see, an evolution in frequency and an evolution in amplitude, as well as an evolution in the number of channels that get involved. So you are starting to see, if you look carefully over here, you're starting to see some involvement of the parasagittal contacts here. And then there is more evolution in frequencies and amplitude. On this page, you're able to see a very clear asymmetry and difference between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. The seizure in the left temporal head region has also evolved. It has evolved in frequency. Now you can see a lot of fast frequencies intermixed with the underlying theta activity. You're starting to see some spread in the parasagittal region, which we had seen previously, but which is somewhat more prominent here. And there is further evolution here. Now the frequencies are starting to slow down, but the superimposed fast frequencies persist. There is slowing in the right hemisphere as well, but there is definitely an asymmetry as the seizure is lateralized to the left temporal head region. You're seeing some spiky components in the left temporal head region here as well. And on this next page, there is further evolution. You're starting to see some eye blinks along with the seizure. In the seizure previously, there was no obvious eye blinks, but here you're able to see some eye blinks that are in association with the seizure. So you can suspect, just looking at the CEG, that this person is now awake, or the patient has been awake since you started seeing the eye blink artifacts. The heart rate, if you look carefully on this page, varies from 93 to 96 beats per minute, and we will make a mention of that when we are trying to put together the final report. This is ongoing seizure. The frequencies have slowed down. There is still a mixture of frequencies here. Eye blinks are still obvious. There is an asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. The right hemisphere is still not showing any rhythmic activity, but it does show slow activity. This is the next channel, and you can see the end of the seizure right here. This is approximately the end of the seizure. You can see uh, some muscle twitches probably. So this is muscle artifact. The patient probably has some muscle twitches. And there is some, possibly some movement artifact in this area. And there are fast frequencies that you see superimposed on the background, okay? So this is 10 seconds after the seizure is over. You're still seeing some eye blink artifacts and you're seeing low amplitude beta activity. And this is ongoing recording in the same patient. A couple years ago, I was in Jasper National Park in Alberta, and I could not resist seeing these sharp waves. And I thought I'll share some of the sharp waves that we see in nature. Okay, let's try to put together the report for this EEG. So in the description, the EEG background did not demonstrate a well-developed occipital alpha rhythm. Intermittent periods of posterior dominant theta and alpha activity ranging from 6 to 8 hertz was, however, noted on a few occasions 
as I pointed it out to you in the first page. At the beginning of the record, an asymmetry was noted between the left and the right hemisphere with polymorphic delta activity on the right temporal head region. Predominantly a mixture of delta and theta activity ranging from 1 to 6 hertz was seen throughout the recording. I have not shown you the entire EEG but that was the pattern in the background. Beta activity was seen superimposed on the background as we saw at the start of this EEG and also after the electrographic seizure. Hyperventilation was not done due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Intermittent photic stimulation was not done in this patient as the patient had a seizure early on. If you do not do intermittent photic stimulation, you should document a reason for that. Stage two sleep was not attained. We did not see sleep spindles or K-complexes, which are the defining feature of stage two sleep. So stage two sleep was not attained. The EEG was remarkable for an electrographic seizure with earliest changes in the left temporal head region. The seizure began at, so you have to document at what time you started seeing the seizure and ended at, you have to say, at what time did it end. In this case, the seizure lasted approximately 54 seconds. Clinically, there was no localizing or lateralizing motor activity during the seizure. So lateralizing motor activity would be somebody has head or eyes turning to one side. If a person starts rhythmic twitching on one side of the face or one side of the body starts twitching, those are lateralizing features. Or if a person has dystonic posturing of the left arm or the right arm, those are also lateralizing features. So in this case, there was no lateralizing motor activity seen during the electrographic seizure. Patient was seen staring off into the space and was not responding to the EEG technologist. So that is worth documenting that. So if a person is having episodes at home and you want to identify if those episodes represent seizures or not, this would be a good EEG report to say that when you saw the electrographic seizure, patient was seen staring off into the space and was not responding to the EEG technologist. So basically the episodes that occur at home possibly also represent uh, epileptic seizures. The EKG demonstrated a heart rate ranging from 88 to 97 beats per minute. So our interpretation will break it down into impression and clinical correlation. This is an abnormal EEG secondary to an electrographic seizure lateralized to the left temporal head region by hemispheric slowing as well as asymmetric right temporal slowing. Our correlation here is that these findings are suggestive of a diffuse or bihemispheric disturbance of cerebral function, as well as an increased risk of recurrent seizures. If someone has epileptiform discharges on one side, or if somebody has electrographic seizures, this person is at a higher risk of having recurrent or ongoing seizures. The asymmetric right hemispheric slowing raises the possibility of a structural abnormality in the right hemisphere, I normally would suggest correlation with neuroimaging is recommended. I have the access of CTs and MRIs in many of these patients. So for my own learning, I like to look at the CT scans and MRIs and correlate that with my EEG findings. I would like to thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next tutorial.